And the TE report uh, should convey essential information to others who are uh, uh, non-specialist uh, uh, in echocardiography as well. And the principles dis uh, described here are applicable uh, in other settings in which non-cardiac surgery uh, would be conducted using this TE report. So coming to the report of it, uh, it should include pre and uh, post-surgical uh, findings. And uh, uh, regarding the congenital heart disease, uh, it needs uh, uh, some more specialized uh, report. Uh, it should help in perioperative de decision making. Uh, uh, that is like change in any operative surgery or uh, prognosis should be mentioned in this T report. And it includes a conc concise summary, a concise summary of finding uh, uh, which are understandable uh, to the non-eco uh, practitioners is also an essential part of it. And uh, uh, it includes a uh, training and accreditation process as well, like the ACTA uh, uh, training and uh, EACTA training accreditation process. So the report includes uh, this part as well. The TE reporting will uh, help in audit auditing the TE work that is happening in an institute as well as it will help as a research, pro uh, research tool. It will work as a research tool as well. So coming to the types of TE report, uh, we are having verbal uh, reporting as well as written reporting. I uh, will be discussing uh, written reporting in this session. So coming to the verbal reporting, uh, uh, it is like the one which we give uh, inside OT uh, to the surgeon on table. So the written reporting, uh, uh, the importance of written reporting is like it will give a comprehensive reporting. So it, it includes all the uh, uh, findings that we see. Uh, inside OT. So it will not, uh, the written reporting helps us reporting all the findings and uh, it elevates the rep repetitive material as well as it includes normal range of values. Uh, there are two types of written reporting. One is uh, tick, uh, tick, box types, uh, tick uh, box types and uh, conclusion ex explanation types. Our IACT uh, T reporting uh, is having a tick box types of uh, uh, T reporting and uh, Conclusion explanation types is of uh, is one uh, which uh, the EACT recommends. That is European uh, Soci Society of Echocardiography recommends uh, conclusion explanation types. Of there is one more uh, reporting that is com computerized reporting. Uh, they are they are having a standardized forms, and it usually comes in a tick box types, and it is easy to use. So, our echocardiography platforms use this computerized reporting. Uh, we can save mo moving and still images in this computerized <coughs> reporting. Uh, uh, newer and more interactive systems are still under development in the computerized reporting format. Coming to the <coughs> content of the report, the content uh, begins with the uh, patient demographics like name, age, sex, height, weight, and hospital ID. And date and time of the reporting should be uh, noted down. And uh, name and grade of the operator is also important. Uh, placement of the probe uh, and the complications associated it should be reported in the beginning. And quality of the image and uh, baseline parameters like ECG, systolic blood pressure, pre-op, uh, IBP insertion, if it is there, should be recorded. So it begins with like name, age, and uh, this patient uh, demographic findings initially. After that, uh, the placement of the probe, whether it is easy or difficult, and the uh, quality of the image, what you are uh, doing, and uh, it includes uh, uh, the echocardiographer details as well, and the patient baseline parameters. So coming to 2D T and uh, cardiac dimensions that we use in our reporting are of the same range as recommended uh, in the transthoracic echo. And the anesthesia and IPPV affect uh, our uh, T dimensions in this reporting. And uh, basically, LA size and ROT diameters are uh, more affected uh, 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 on table. Coming to the LV dimensions, uh, the next part is uh, ne the next part of uh, T reporting uh, uh, continues with the LV dimension reporting. 
in LV dimension, basically uh, we report LV minor axis and LV major axis, uh, which are taken both in end diastole and end systole. So LV minor axis is taken uh, as an internal diameter of the LV cavity measured uh, at the mitral tip perpendicular to the long axis of the LV. And uh, the major axis uh, is the distance between the midpoint of the mitral annular plane uh, to the LV apex. And the septal wall thickness as well as posterior wall thickness is also noted in diastole. So this way we record the septal wall thickness and posterior wall thickness in transgastric uh, short axis view at the mid papillary level. And in this way we can measure the short axis of the LV in uh, mid-esophageal two chamber view in which uh, the short axis extends below the mitral annular tip. The long axis uh, from the point uh, of the annular, uh, uh, mitral annular level to the LV apical level. We take in two chamber view because uh, it avoids uh, the LV four shortening that happens in uh, LV uh, this four chamber view. And it, uh, the short axis uh, again can be taken in transgastric two chamber view as well. So here uh, if I uh, measured both the long axis and short axis of LV. Coming to the global systolic function of LV, as we all know LV EF is calculated by diastolic uh, uh, volume minus systolic volume divided by diastolic volume multiplied by 100 <coughs> and uh, fractional area, area shortening is uh, the area of the LV cavity in diastole and systole uh, divided by uh, diastolic area multiplied by 100. We will give a fractional area uh, uh, this thing and fractional shortening is the diameter basically. Uh, end diastolic diameter minus end, end systolic diameter divided by end diastolic diameter multiplied by 100 will give a fractional shortening. So regarding uh, fractional shortening calculation, it is better to use uh, M mode. Uh, we can use transgastric uh, short axis view or else long axis view and uh, we will measure the uh, dimensions in uh, diastole and systole and we calculate the fractional shortening by this formula. And in this the important uh, thing would be we should avoid, try to avoid the papillary inclusions in M mode uh, echocardiography. To avoid uh, papillary inclusions, it is better to go ahead with the long axis uh, view of the transgastric in which we can locate the uh, papillary muscles and we can avoid it. According to the fractional area change, it is the area of the LV cavity in uh, diastole minus systole and divided by the diastolic area multiplied by 100 will give a fractional area change like this. It is also calculated in the transgastric. Uh, short axis view of the LV and EF as we all know is calculated is a volumetric measurement is uh, calculated uh, uh, using this uh, diastolic volume and a systolic volume in uh, four chamber view or two chamber view. If you are using a four chamber view, we should try to avoid four shortening by retroflexing the probe or else we can use a two chamber view and uh, we, we should try to include the LV apical cavity uh, in, calculating, uh, in calculating this ejection fraction. Coming to the regional LV systolic function, in 2002 AHA uh, writing group recommended 17 segment model that we all know. So we just uh, check all the 17 segments using uh, 5 basic views and we will try to uh, give a wall motion score. Uh, wall motion scoring is given to each segment of the LV cavity. So regarding the each segment uh, scoring, if it is normal or hyperkinetic, we will give a score of 1, if it is hypokinetic, we will give a score of 2. If it is arkinetic, arkinetic means there will be negligible thickening of the LV cavity. We will give a score of 3 to it and uh, this kinesia is a paradoxal systolic motion. For that we will give a score of 4 and uh, if it is aneurysmal, aneurysmal means like in diastole uh, there will be deforming, uh, deformation of that particular segment. So that uh, will give a score of 5. So after giving the score to each segment of a LV cavity, uh, the wall motion score will be calculated uh, as a sum of all scores. Uh, divided by the number of segments uh, that we visualize in that uh, uh, whole LV cavity. So this will give the wall motion score. So this way, these are the five basic views in which uh, we uh, uh, calculate our regional uh, wall motion abnormality, four chamber, two chamber and uh, long axis and uh, short axis at the mid papillary level and uh, transgastric short axis at the basal level. So there are uh, 17 segments. Mm. In this uh, uh, two chamber view, we will be able to see the anterior and inferior wall of the LV. Uh, in four chamber, usually we see the uh, anterior lateral part of the LV here and uh, uh, 
uh, septomedial part of the LB here. And uh, in again uh, this long axis view, we usually see the antero uh, lateral part of the uh, anter anterior anterior. Uh, yeah, it is inferior lateral part of the LV is seen here, sir. And uh, here, anterior septal part of the LV would be seen here, this part. So, in short axis view, uh, here uh, is the, at the papillary level, we will assess the segments, and here we will assess at the basal level. So, reference ranges uh, for the partition values of the left ventricular size. So, basically, we will consider here LVID. If LVID is more than 6.9 uh, in males, it is abnormal, and if it is more than 6.2 in females, it is uh, considered to be severely abnormal. So, coming to the LA dimensions, uh, LA size measures the severity and the chronicity of the left ventricular diastolic dysfunction, and uh, it is aptly re recommended as a HbA1c of the ventricular diastolic function. So, nowadays, LA size measurement uh, is uh, catching up with some importance. So, it is uh, regarded as a prognostic, uh, quant uh, a prognostic indicator of a patient and uh, other things. So, LA size measurement is also uh, important one. So, T in T, it is difficult to measure accurately uh, the size of the L LA because uh, the image sector would not include uh, uh, complete LA in any of the images usually. As our uh, esophageal uh, probe lies just next to the LA. So, LA uh, basically we measure AP diameter. AP diameter is measured in aortic uh, wall short axis view or as well as in aortic wall long, long axis view. In short axis view uh, at 30 to 60 degrees, uh, LA diameter is measured as a vertical distance between the aortic root and the posterior wall of the LA. In uh, long axis view, it is uh, measured from the straight line passing perpendicular to the aortic wall crossing uh, through the posterior wall of the left atrium. So, it is measured in uh, end systole usually. So, this way we can measure long axis, the distance between IOT equal to the posterior LA wall and uh, in short axis, IOT equal to the posterior part of the LA. Coming to the RA dimensions, uh, RA dimensions are measured uh, better in four chamber view only. There are two dimensions for RA, uh, right atrial length as well as right uh, uh, atrial diameter. The length is measured uh, from the center of the tricuspid nullus to the center of the superior uh, right atrial wall and the diameter is measured perpendicular distance between the atrial free wall uh, to the uh, interatrial septum at the mid atrial level it is measured. So, uh, these both uh, measurement are done in end systole. So, this way we measure the RA. So, uh, RA length and RA diameter at the mid atrial level and this line passes from the uh, mid level of the tricuspid endless uh, to the posterior wall of the RA. So, coming to the RV dimensions, uh, RV is a bit difficult to uh, measure because of the complex uh, shape and uh, uh, because it, it uh, uh, encircles the LV uh, physiologically. So, RVF as, uh, uh, as we mentioned before is calculated as a diastolic column and a systolic column divided by diastolic column. So, we calculate uh, RV uh, using taxa as well, tricuspid nullar plane systolic excursion. So, uh, to calculate TAPSA, it is better to calculate in uh, transgastric inflow outflow view. As RV contracts longitudinally more, the longitudinal fiber contraction is better assessed in transgastric inflow outflow view. We can calculate TAPSA in four chamber view as well. So, we have to use M mode to calculate TAPSA. I will show you the next. The next uh, indicator uh, for the RV calculation would be the MPI, that is myocardial performance index. The myocardial performance index, the formula goes like isovolumic contraction, isovolumic uh, contraction time plus isovolumic relaxation time divided by uh, RV ejection time. Coming to the TAPSA, we calculate TAPSA by keeping uh, uh, M mode uh, cursor across the lateral annulus of the tricuspid wall and we measure the distance that it uh, excurts uh, uh, with each systole. So, if uh, we uh, and we uh, whatever the distance we get uh, will be the TAPSA measurement. So, RVF is calculated as uh, we calculate the LVF in uh, modified Simpsons using the modified Simpsons uh, formula. So, reference ranges and uh, partition values for uh, LA size and uh, other things. So, LA diameter if it is uh, more than uh, uh, 5.2. Uh, in males is considered to be abnormal in 4.7 uh, if it is more more than 4.7 uh, 
in female it is considered to be severely abnormal here. So, LA, di uh, LA diameter basically. So, nowadays uh, uh, regarding LA it is uh, more valuable to calculate area than a diameter. So, which will give a better uh, idea of the dimensions of the LA. So, coming to the uh, right atrial diameters, uh, the minor uh, diameter of the minor dimension, uh, uh, mi sorry, minor dimension of RA is uh, greater than 4.4 uh, uh, would be abnormal. So, length uh, of the major dimension, if it is more than 5.3 centimeter, this is considered to be abnormal. So, these are uh, some uh, different uh, views uh, in which uh, we assess uh, left ventricle and right ventricle uh, in for what all we assess uh, that we discussed till now go through this chart quickly. Come to the septum and the left atrial appendage. So, these are also important uh, uh, considerations that, uh, that uh, should be reported. So, coming to the septum, we should the interventricular septum and interatrial septum should be assessed uh, separately. So, we should report whether it is normal hypertrophy, uh, is there any paradoxal motion of the interventricular septum, is there any VSD, if there is a VSD and type of shunt direction should be assessed. In interatrial septum, we should assess uh, whether uh, the bulging as well as whether it is normal and we should uh, try to assess the uh, PFO as well. So, if there is a AST, we should uh, uh, try, try to assess the type of the AST as well as shunt direction. And uh, if there is any interatrial septal defects uh, in other like any congenital anomalies, we should try to assess the QP by QS and uh, we, uh, we should assess this left atrial appendage as well for any thrombus or uh, uh, anything there. So, coming to the QP by QS calculation, roughly calculated uh, by the flow across the uh, different uh, the, the ratio of the flow across the pulmonary, uh, uh, pulmonary artery divided by the flow across the iota. The flow across the iota is calculated by the size of the uh, by uh, calculating the diameter of the iota divided by the uh, multiplied by the VTI of it. So, uh, using the diameter, we can calculate the area of the uh, blood flow that is crossing from LV to iota. So, uh, and multiplied by VTI will give the flow across the system uh, that the systemic circulation that is the QS and QP is calculated by flow across the PA uh, multiplied by the VTI across the PA. So, this way we calculated here. So, the ratio is uh, important in uh, shunts. So, this is uh, I may showing atrial, uh, uh, atrial septal defect uh, which is of uh, secondum AST and here it is showing a left atrial appendage with some thrombos and the measurement uh, done for the thrombus as well. So, coming to the iota and iotic wall, uh, in iota we assess ascending arch, descending uh, uh, thoracic iota. We should assess the diameter. If there is any dissection, we should uh, try to uh, assess the type of it, whether it is type A or type B. If there are any plaque, we should try to measure the plaques and uh, we should assess the mobility of it. And uh, uh, coming to the uh, aortic wall, we should assess the dimension of the annulus, uh, sorry aorta only. So, we should assess the dimension of the annulus, size, sinus of false alva and sinotubular junction sizes as well. Uh, coming to the aortic wall, we should assess the leaflet morphology and motion and AV area calculation can be done by planimetry as well as continuity equation. So, AV area is uh, measured in centimeter square and VTI of LUOT can be calculated. So, this way we can calculate the aortic annulus and uh, sinotubular uh, junction uh, size and uh, sinus of also low size. Even ascending iota can be measured and just below 1 centimeter of the aortic annulus, uh, we can measure the LVOT size as well. So, using planimetry, we can uh, uh, measure the aortic wall area as well, which is expressed as a centimeter square. There. So, uh, coming to the aortic regurgitation assessment and grading, uh, there are a lot of parameters, but uh, basically three ma three parameters are must in T reporting. One is vena contractor, which is expressed in mm and uh, uh, pressure half time in uh, milliseconds and uh, LVO uh, jet to LVOT percentage. The per that I will tell you the calculation next in the next slide. So, this way we calculate the pressure half time of the AR jet. Uh, here it will give the uh, pressure half time which is around uh, 572 milliseconds. So, we uh, we usually measure this uh, aortic wall calculation, Doppler calculations in uh, uh, deep transgastric views uh, in which the aortic wall lies uh, more parallel to the our Doppler beam. So, whatever the regurgitant jet we are ge uh, getting, so we should uh, we, we calculate all the uh, this pressure half time and all. 
So coming to the Vena contractor, it's better to calculate Vena contractor of any mitral or uh, any Vena contractors in uh, zoom mode using uh, color Doppler, which will give a more accurate values. So here we have calculated uh, uh, aortic uh, Vena contractor in uh, long axis view, in zoom view, uh, with a color uh, Doppler involved. And here we have calculated uh, the jet is to LVOT with uh, uh, percentage. So it's better to use uh, M color M mode uh, while you calculate uh, the jet is to LVOT uh, percentage. So in which uh, this is the jet width and this is the LVOT width. The percentage of uh, uh, it when we take will give the severity of AR. So these are some parameters of AR. It's a whole uh, uh, lot of things there. So we can recommend to the Wiener contractor that we calculated. If it is more than 0.6, uh, it is considered to be a severe AR. And uh, when is the pressure half time, if it is less than uh, 200 milliseconds, it is considered to be a severe AR. And uh, regarding the jet width, uh, jet height to the LVOT height percentage, if it is more than 65 percent, it is considered to be a severe AR. So aortic stenosis and assess, uh, stenosis assessment and grading. So in this, uh, we basically calculate the peak jet velocity in millisecond, uh, meter per second, sorry, and the peak gradient, uh, uh, which is uh, calculated as MMHA, and uh, mean gradient and uh, dimensionless index. These are four important findings for aortic stenosis that we calculate. Uh, AV gradient, uh, here uh, to calculate AV gradient, as I said, we should uh, 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 do it in transgastric long axis view. Uh, so here, uh, once we calculate the, uh, 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 we have to get a proper uh, uh, Doppler spectral uh, uh, image uh, to calculate the AV gradient. So once we get the proper Doppler uh, 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 spectral uh, image, we, uh, by tracing the, uh, the spectral uh, image, we will get the max, PZ, uh, max gradient as well as mean gradient. So again, AR jet, as I said, it is better to calculate in uh, color M mode, just the color M mode cursor should be just one centimeter below the aortic wall. So that the, that's the point where we try to calculate the uh, uh, jet width uh, is to elevate with uh, percentage. So here we calculated is coming up to 66.19 percent, which goes in favor of a severe AR. So this is the uh, grading of uh, severe AS uh, that we mentioned. So if it is uh, more than uh, 4 meter per second, it is severe AS. Uh, yes. uh, if the mean gradient is more than 40 mmHg, it is severe. IoT cholera, if it is less than 1, is severe, and it is indexed and velocity ratio also. Coming to the metal wall, leaflet, uh, in metal wall, you should assess uh, the leaflet morphology, motion, calcification of uh, all the three components of each leaflet, A1, A2, A3 of AML, and P1, P2, P3 of PML. And we should assess AML, PML, endless length, and AML, PML ratio and systolic entry motion of uh, mitral wall, if, the, if it is present, uh, it should be mentioned there. And uh, mitral wall area calculation can be done in uh, pressure half time as well as uh, planimetry uh, using uh, planimetry measurement. So this way, it's better to calculate uh, mitral wall uh, 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 dimensions uh, using, again, uh, zoom mode, which will give more accurate uh, findings. Uh, uh, we can assess in four chamber view as well as uh, uh, esophageal uh, long axis view. And uh, planimetry assessment is done in transgastric uh, basal short axis view, that's a fish mouth view. Uh, here the difficulty would be to lie, uh, lie the uh, 2D dimension at the mitral uh, tip level. And uh, here we can see the uh, systolic entry motion of the mitral wall. So MR, uh, again, regurgitation assessment and grading is done uh, uh, according to the Carpentier's classification. So whether the jet is central or eccentric, vena contracta can, uh, should be measured uh, in millimeters and pulmonary venous flow pattern should be measured. So this way vena contracta is uh, measured using color Doppler better, it will be better zoomed only. And uh, this way we will measure the pulmonary venous flow pattern. Coming to the Doppler values and quantity values of the MR, as we all know this, if the vena contracta is more than uh, 7 mm, it is considered to be a severe MR. Mitral wall stenosis, uh, again it is assessed mean gradient, peak gradient and pressure half time. So mean gradient again is assessed using the spectral pattern of the uh, mitral uh, inflow patterns. 
and the E by A ratio and pressure half time can be calculated in this. Grading and all this. So again, tenting height and uh, tenting area and diastolic uh, dysfunction and uh, circumflex artery visibility should be reported in mitral wall assessment. So this is uh, uh, propagation velocity uh, calculation showing uh, the diastolic uh, functional assessment of the LV and uh, mitral wall assessment. And uh, E by A ratio is calculated uh, at, uh, like this and E by E prime can be calculated. So tenting area and tenting height uh, are important findings in uh, when it comes to mitral wall repair. It is the tenting height is the distance uh, between the annular uh, plane and the uh, cooptation point. Yeah. So coming to the tricuspid wall and pulmonary wall, we should assess the morphology of the TV, uh, tricusp morphology of the tricuspid wall when pulmonary wall are important and uh, uh, whether it, uh, the lesion is stenotic or regurgitant should be assessed and E by ratio across the tricuspid wall should be assessed and uh, if it is a TR, we should assess vena contracta and uh, uh, IVC uh, 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 should be assessed for the no, uh, diameter of it, whether it is dilated or normal and hepatic venous uh, Doppler flow pattern should be assessed and uh, uh, PA systolic pressure can be calculated using this TR uh, jet. So this way we get the hepatic uh, venous uh, flow pattern, systole, diastole and atrial contraction. So hepatic venous flow pattern uh, gives us a rough value of right sided uh, 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 filling pattern. So the pulmonary systolic flows can be assessed using uh, arch short axis view, upper esophageal arch uh, short axis view. TR again uh, is assessed using vena contract and other parameters. A pericardial effusion, pleural effusion and other masses if present should be assessed. So here uh, a image showing uh, LA uh, myxoma. So post-operative also we should proceed with the uh, 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 findings like uh, first we should begin with the name and grade of the operator, vital parameter uh, recording and uh, other RVEF, EL, uh, LVEF and uh, wall motion score abnormalities. And IOTA and uh, IOTIC wall replacement uh, should be assessed uh, post-operatively. If the IOTIC wall replacement or repair is done, we should uh, go ahead with the uh, findings like what, uh, what is the ascending IOTA in MM. Aortic wall area and centimeter square should be assessed using continuity equation and peak velocity across the wall should be assessed and peak, uh, peak and mean gradient across the wall should be assessed and function of the wall prosthesis uh, uh, should be mentioned like whether uh, it is a normal or uh, it should rule out uh, a parallel leak in each uh, replacements. This way in transgastric, uh, deep transgastric uh, views we should assess the gradient across the prosthetic wall. Coming to the ME repair and replacement, again peak velocity should be assessed, mitral wall area again, using continuity equation should be assessed and uh, function of the wall process is, uh, should be uh, assessed like normal or uh, whether there is any parallelar leak, we should assess all that. And if it is a repair, we should assess the cooptation height and uh, uh, the mitral wall repair or replacement uh, reporting should end with the circumflex artery uh, uh, appearance and mention of it. So this way we calculated my, after replacement uh, the Doppler for ca characteristic of mitral wall. So tricuspid again the same peak velocity and uh, function of the wall process should be assessed. So these are our uh, IACTA reporting form which includes all the findings that uh, we have mentioned till now. So EACTA form is also there. So this is EACTA form. So this usually mentions the details of the pathology uh, that we come across instead of a tick. Uh, box type. So these are uh, some references. Thank you.